So I know it's nearly lunchtime, so everybody's probably hungry and they want something light and fluffy. So I'm going to zip through this, and if you have any questions, we do have two full security panels that you can do in-depth explanations and get help. The next session after this is going to be a hands-on hacking session. So at one point, you're going to get some red sticks being passed around with data files on. You can copy those. It includes VirtualBox, it includes um, Elastics, and it includes a copy of Backtrack. So you can all have a good bit of fun this afternoon. So welcome to Compromised. This is intended legally for informational purposes. Uh, it's not meant so you can go out and make money. Although I do know a few countries uh, that you could sell routes to and make some good money, thanks to the earlier presentation. So beginners need tools. Not everybody is a security expert or a mathematician or a, a script genius. And you'll want to pen test your own stuff in your office. And you need tools, right? They're not growing on the tree, and you don't want to download them randomly off the internet, because they could include backdoors and do you in pretty good. So here is the original hacking tool. You got it for free in a box of Captain Crunch. It produced the 2600 hertz tone, which is an E. I can't pronounce an E, because I'm a boy. But um, you would do one long burst with it, and then short little blips. And that's how you would dial, using any old payphone. <laughs> So, more practical tools for today. Backtrack 5. Has anybody heard of Backtrack? OK, lots of people. Cool. You know it's not actively developed anymore, and it's now Kali, right? OK, cool. So, attack vectors. Uh, many people hear this word. They have no clue what it means. Um, most of you in here will know some of this, so we'll probably get a little snow. Um, these are things like web, FTP. Everybody focuses way too much on VoIP. The, the whole thing is like, oh, I've got to protect my SIP, got to protect my SIP. Well, the game is not attacking the SIP anymore. So many SIP servers have simple methods for doing things like rejecting auth that a lot of tools are really useless. So people are going after the other things like your mail, your Samba, your FTP, your TFTP, and all the other various low-hanging fruit that people have been hacking for years. So some points of uh, common abuse with asterisk. Poor usernames and passwords, as we all know. Unsecure networks, people can do traffic dumps and easily rip out your usernames and passwords. And poor dial plan mechanics, such as the X dot. Uh, for older versions of asterisk, if you have the X dot, you could call something like zero and then put an and, and then you could do an international number, and then you'd be calling international, which was, you know, pretty cool. So many vendors, like previously talking, like to throw in a kitchen sink of services. Uh, FreePBX, uh, Trixbox, Elastics, they're all kind of the same thing, but they include web servers, FTP servers, everything. They are a nightmare to secure in most cases. Um, they're getting a lot better, though. Um, and this increases the potential attack vectors, again, most commonly through web. Other areas commonly overlooked is people. I think uh, somebody mentioned this this morning already, but people are pretty easy and they want to help, right? So it's very uh, simple to get on the phone and say, hey, I really need help. My IT guy just got hit by a bus. We have a bus factor of one. I need you know, help resetting my system or getting an IP. Or in some other scenarios, uh, like with protected networks, people say, oh, um, my employee's sick this week. They've gone home. Can you please allow his IP address? And then from there, they get whitelisted and they can just go to town. So free PBX uh, 10 and 9 are the examples of ones that have really bad web exploits in. And this is um, done using a packet injection that lets you run arbitrary commands. They also has an insecure version of Nmap. So those are pretty fun to see. Um, I think I have it queued up here, actually. So yeah, here is the video of free PBX getting owned in about 30 seconds or less. So you accept the call, and that's pretty much it. It's done. It's broken. You're in there. Like Santa and cookies. So this is what you'll get to learn to do after lunch. 
you'll get to go beat each other up with this. So hopefully this will be fun for you and uh, you'll get to take something home with you. So on back to this. Now to the tools, backtrack. Now released as Kali, as I just previously mentioned. First thing you want to do with your network, your buddy's network, any network in general that you want to see if it's secure, you want to run some scans against it. Nmap is a basic tool. It comes with almost everything except Windows. <laughs> you can download it. Uh, just running it plain Jane, those TCP scans, which lets you find lovely things like HTTP, MySQL, um, the asterisk manager, usually some other interesting things like mail or DNS. So you have lots of things on your little list that you can go, oh, is there an exploit for that? Is there an exploit for that? And then you can test them. The SU switch, big U, lets you do UDP scans. So if somebody thinks they're clever by sticking an asterisk on port 5080 like FreeSwitch does, then you can just say 5080 and scan that port and figure it out. So if you see 5038 running, try Telnet into it. This is the easiest thing to get access to a box, an asterisk box that is. If the asterisk manager is listening from the outside, ooh, good golly, there is going to be death. So here's an example. You could telnet into the IP, you connect, you can say login, and if it's a FreePBX or Elastix or one of the million other flavors of that prepackaged software, it's usually admin and AMP 111. If you've done that and you get a success, oh, you're going to have fun now. So you can run the action command, and then you can type SIP show peers. And then you can see the users and the passwords which is you know, super fantastic. Fail to ban did not save you in this scenario. It didn't even see you coming. So test accounts, oh, not this slide. <laughs> OK, finding extensions and hacking. This is a long, more annoying way. Uh, you have tools in Backtrack, uh, primarily IAX, Enum, and SIPVicious, which is SVMAP, SVWAR, and uh, the other useless one nobody uses, which is the report. All your VoIP pen test stuff for this afternoon, since you'll be playing with it, are going to be in the pen test slash VoIP folder. So you can see all the extra stuff. An IAX enum attack looks like this. Somebody totally needs to get me a faster laptop for Christmas. So. If you log into asterisk, you get to see lovely stuff like that. So if you see stuff on your log happening like this, you know somebody's running enumeration on you. You also know you don't have auth reject always on, and you're just going to be screwed all the time because people are going to be hammering you. You'll have fail to ban in there, but then all of a sudden you'll have 10 million rules in your IP tables making your box a donkey, which is also not very good. So SIP enumeration uh, is very similar. You do it with SVMAP, which is a part of um, SIPVicious. If you do fingerprint and the target IP, you'll usually get back, if they've not you know, hardened it up a little bit, a version of asterisk so you know what exploits to start smacking it with. Um, you'll commonly see this if you don't get anything, which is nothing to really be afraid of. It just means you, you don't get any data back. You can try and pimp it out a little bit by using switches like minus M invite and options and whatnot, because not everything is blocking invites or options. Most new stuff is now, but st still all our old stuff that is getting rolled. So if you see something, you get it like that. You'll see what version of asterisk it is, IP, yada, yada. Trying to get the extensions, now you know what flavor you've got. This is the basic command for SVWAR. It will scan the default first few hundred extensions. If you want to specify a better extension range, uh, say E100 to 10,000, you can do that. Uh, more specifically, with a lot of carriers, uh, you'll see that they name their extensions after their DIDs. So if you know their DID range, you can just put that in there instead. Is any, anybody here using DIDs as their usernames? Yeah? Probably changed that at one point, right? 
Okay, so you'll ever get nothing, or you'll see something like this. Which is, you know, pretty nice, because now you know there's valid users on there that you can go pillage. And this box is not protected. So you can do that using SV crack. You define which extension you want to pillage, and you give it a password file. Now you can make a long password file of your own, nice and big. There is some other tools online that have like 16 terabyte MySQL databases. Chances are you're going to hack that box using that. It'll be like a year before you get a password, right? So not really useful. So anyway, that's what you'll see if you're successful. If not, you'll get that annoying error message. Anyway, many companies have TFTP servers or online provisioning. Is there anybody here with online provisioning in TFTP? Yay. OK. You can try and pull configs from TFTP servers if you're local. So if you're in an office one day giving a presentation and you're a CD little bugger, you can try and go into the TFTP server because you've got it from the DHCP options, and you can pull off all their files. That's usually pretty uh, a decent way of doing things, you know, door-to-door -door salesman. Hello, I'm selling chips. So anyway, <laughs> um, people usually set up ACLs with MAC addresses and stuff, MACLs, and they're like, oh, yeah, now we're solid, right? Nobody can get that stuff. So say hello to Mac Changer. Mac Changer in Backtrack lets you change your MAC address. So if you want to look like a polycom, you can. If you want to be the polycom that's on the desk, you can flip it upside down and get the MAC address. You can also poison their switch that way, too. OK, now go scrape some phone files. <laughs> OK, think you're secure with VLANs. Guess again. Say hello to VoIP Hopper to automatically listen and set up and join. There's the command for that. This is fantastic if you ever stay in at a win. They usually have the Polycom IP phones or the Cisco IP phones on a separate VLAN. You can usually hop on them like that. TMC, exclude that from the video, please. <laughs> <laughs> OK, provision on the web. Web is a lot easier because you don't have to be local. It's my favorite, in fact. In many cases, you can discover a URL on a locked device with the use of a transparent proxy. Does anybody know what a transparent proxy is? Yes, good. OK, squid can be used as a transparent proxy. Has anybody heard of PFSense? Yes, OK, great. PFSense is a fantastic firewall. It has a SIP proxy built in. And it also has awesome clickable installable packages, such as SIP proxy and reporting. And you can set it up in transparent mode. So if you get a little device from Primus or something, and it's got web provisioning, just an example. Put it behind your PFSense that has a transparent proxy in, and you'll be able to see the address it's trying to access. Now, this address will probably be something like this. And if it's something like that, you know in most cases, carriers aren't buying onesies and twosies like the little VoIP guys. They've probably ordered a 1,000 of this particular one device, and they have serialized the MAC addresses you know, zero through the Fs and whatnot. So you can easily grab somebody else's user ID and then go to town with it just by changing the URL and you'll download the provisioning file. Has anybody seen this hack before? No? Yeah, you have? Oh, man, I thought I had a zero day. OK, so everybody's aware of that. Don't do that. It's a bad thing. There's no love, no protection for you on that. OK, so if you can't find one, this is a good time to learn a scripting language. If you do have a URL, make a scripting language, have it go through a few hundred thousand. Again, carrier will not give a, a care because they're probably not watching it. The smaller ITSPs, they're probably like humming and hiring, going, oh, fail to ban, saving me. And they're not watching their HTTP traffic, and they're going to get rolled. So exploited other vulnerabilities. Fast track. Has anybody heard of fast track? No? OK. A couple people. Fast track is like the idiot's guide to hacking with a web page in Backtrack. You can hack SQL servers, web servers. I've tried this on several types of IP phones, and it's caused some really bad crashes, which is very fun to see. But um, it's got a great slogan, where it's OK to finish in under three minutes. It's perfect. Women don't like that, but hackers do. So to start up, 
fast track once you've got your sticks and you're ready to go this afternoon because you'll probably want to play with a few things. It's very easy to do. I can go back to this slide again anyway. You just want to go to that folder and then load fast track with the minus G option and it'll bring up that little web page with a URL. You can have some fun with each other. Now, I don't encourage doing this in the real world. It's completely not good. Hacking bad. Okay, so we've got some other low-hanging fruit. Voicemail, easily hackable, and it's numeric. Has anybody tried to enter an F on a phone? You can't. Sure, you press five three times. So what can you do from voicemail? Dial out if somebody's enabled it. Some people do this, and I think they're crazy. Okay, you can play Havoc by changing voicemail if you just want to you know, kick the bucket and have some fun. And it's super easy to do on old Nortel systems. Most car rental places and little companies like that, they've got an old Nortel BCM50 or something even older and a StarTalk 385 phone system. You can easily hack a StarTalk voicemail system. They're like rigi so ridiculous. There's like four or five different default users with admin rights. And as soon as you've like popped one of those boxes, you can dial out all day. And then in your asterisk, you can put that route in with like a little weight and then, anyway, I won't get into those details. Okay, so pastebin them apples. Many sites like pastebin can easily be scraped. You'll be amazed how many noobs put their passwords and IPs on these things. Does anybody use pastebin? A few people? Has anybody actually pasted their configs and IPs and stuff? Okay, good. It's a good thing to know. So mail server hacks. Linux and scripting and all those other wonderful things that people like to do with mail and pre-canned systems, they're, they open your box up for exploits. Nobody even thinks of this one or even looks for it. Here's one I got on actually my system a while ago. It's kind of funny because I had to change the name because it was really rude. But um, you can see there that they're trying to uh, do some sort of wacky <laughs> reverse uh, shell sort of action, hoping that I'm running this through like a script or some sort of, you know, automated tool for my customers. Well, no. And this is Unix I run. It's a lot better than Linux. That's just a personal preference, though. <laughs> FreeBSD. Yes. Very old. Okay, local phone snatch and grabs. Does your local devices have the default logins? Anybody here use Astra's? I love the asterisk. You can go right into that thing and download the config with the passwords. So the default for any asterisk is admin and five twos. If you're not changing that, you should be getting on changing that. Uh, Polycoms, it's 456. Digium, uh, admin and 789. I really think that password was made just to take fun of Polycom. I don't know. Maybe somebody at Digium <laughs> could speak to that matter. And most Linksys are admin and admin. Now, what's funny about this is I actually had uh, one of my subscribers, a small computer company, they had a little router, because they're small, and they forwarded port 80 to their PC. Now, what happened is they had a power failure, and when the power failure came back up, the phone got the PC's old IP address. So a hacker had gone in there, Got the IP and made about $400 worth of phone calls, which was really quite sad. But anyway, you don't want to be caught doing stuff like that because it is grief. Just the default password would have saved him there, but he didn't change it. So billing hacks. This is not really hack, but as a, as a end user and a carrier and a provider, as a carrier, you can profit from it. As an end user, you get boned by it. So there's things like uh, rate cards and FAS that you always have to analyze. If you're not analyzing your bills today, I'm sure like there'll be four or five speeches always telling you to analyze your bills. Does anybody here not analyze their bills? No, you all do? Wow, you rock. Okay. So um, rate cards. Sometimes you'll find that your rates change to something drastic or incorrect. Uh, that's a big problem. And FAS, we a lot of small prepaid VoIP providers, they do FAS like crazy. So if you make a 10 second call, you find out you get billed for 45 seconds. Now you figure, eh, whatever, it were a penny. Now times that by a few million calls, this company is making money 
with barely any outbound minutes. So watch out for those. So caller ID hacks are also fun. Everybody has business cards. They love to give them out. It has their cell phone number on, their office number on. Take heed of that. Try calling their office with their caller ID from their cell. See if you get a different menu. See if you get a dial tone. This is very common with a lot of people using asterisk. Is anybody here doing this? No? Oh, can't get a business card? OK. So thanks. Now pass the keys. Hopefully, Nira has copied enough to start passing. That's OK. It's got one. Oh, my gosh. Four more. So the ones you've got, start passing along. As soon as that person's done, pass them to the next person. In this uh, memory stick, you are going to find uh, three or four files. One is VirtualBox, because I don't want you wrecking your PC. You'll find a copy of Backtrack, and you'll find a copy of Elastix 2.2, and you'll also find a severely compromisable uh, VMware image uh, for an older copy of Asterisk that just loves to take the offs. So that being said, Nice. <laughs> that, that would be in his presentation. <laughs> the guy giving the hacking presentation doesn't tell you about that. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully by this afternoon I'll have a few hundred bank accounts. <laughs> no, the hotel internet I figured would be pretty brutal and if we had maybe 200 people trying to download four gigs of data, it'd probably cripple it to death. So, anyway, that is that. Hopefully, that was light, fluffy, and it didn't, you know, take away from your lunch hour. Okay. And guys. as soon as you get back in here, or if you want to stick in here, start copying that data, and we can get cracking when we start up again. We've got just under ten minutes before we break for lunch. Um, uh, hopefully, we'll have more of the sticks ready for the after lunch session, where the actual hacking gets to start running. Here is a uh, video. This one's not done by me. Um, this is a video of some new tools in the Metasploit framework, specifically used for banging away on um, boxes, um, SIP proxies prim primarily. So if you've got open SIPs and several other those wonderful things out there, uh, this is used for going to town at them. It's a little video. You can talk while this is going on because it's got no noise, and you can pass stuff around. This is kind of like my last little bit of filler. And if you do have questions, feel free to ask. And if nobody can see this, it's OK. I'll make the videos available. So here, they're just setting some basic settings so they can start this script automatically. And. It's kind of like having all the tools built right into the Metasploit versus outside it. It's a nice little add-on that you can get. Uh, my name is Alex. So hey, I have Alex. a question. If you lock down your box, say, with uh, IP tables, yep. uh, and whitelist only IPs that connect to your box based on their IP, in the SIP ports and the media ports, say mm. 5060 yep. and media 10,000 or 20,000. So you whitelist, say, only five IPs that can connect and blacklist everything else. So sure. Will tools like this, you have uh, be able to do anything to your server? Well, are you, wh are you whitelisting just the 5060 in the IPs or are you whitelisting the entire IP? You're whitelisting the IP and the ports that connect to it. So you say um, okay. one, so two, three, four. That's cool. So if you're blocking everything else by default, uh, it'll protect you from the people you don't know. It won't protect you from the people you do know. In most cases, a lot of hackers, they'll, they'll spend 10 bucks on one of these like, little accounts because you know what? They're going to milk it for like thousands. So you've whitelisted a potential hacker that's just going to go to town on you, and you're not going to know about it unless you've got additional tools. No, say, say I white, whitelist my client's uh, Comcast router IP. Sure. And I know he con connects from there. Sure. And I whitelist my uh, SIP provider, trunking provider, mm -hmm. and, I, and I like them down on their IP and their ports. 
So will uh, tools like that come in and do anything? Because you'll be scanning from another IP. Well, no, if, if you've got implicit blocks on your stuff, it's going to block the outside world. But in most scenarios, what will happen is somebody will get an account with a provider that is buttoned up like that. And then they know they've got almost you know, go-to-town access because you're whitelisted. You've whitelisted the IP. The, the, the other possibility, of course, is that um, someone can send traffic with a false uh, source IP if they can get close to your, to your internal network. Yeah, because you wouldn't have single, just a single invite packet with a premium number on it with a spoofed IP address so I could be enough to make a call. Could be, yeah. It depends how you've got your stuff set up. I was asking if, a, if, if just a single invite packet with a spoof premium number that came from that whitelisted address would be enough to get the PBX or phone to make a call. It depends how the PBX set up entirely. May I? What you describe is something that we tried. He loves um, these questions. I'll describe the attack vector because it's pretty interesting to see. Um, what we've done is Okay, so back in Israel, we have right now four different what we call tier one voice over IP uh, hosted PBX slash residential services. So what we've done, we've basically mapped four, um, four subnets. We tried to see if we can create an attack not on the actual provider but on the actual customers and see what will they will do in the case that where we attack them. So what we've do is we've used SV map with the minus M parameter to actually set an invite. As previously seen on slide 18. What? <laughs> what? Sorry, what was that? As previously seen on the prior slide. Yeah, we've seen that one. We've seen that parameter. What we've done, we gave it a very simple subnet. We said, okay, please scan the following network. It was 196.218. Full class B network and just start initiating invites to every IP address randomly. So essentially, we found about 60, what was that? We found about, sorry, about 6,000 devices on that network. Not that many devices when you think about it, right? So what we've done, we've gone into SIT SVMAP and we changed the caller ID to be 1900 and we've changed also the caller ID name to be 1900. Sorry, what was that? Somebody what? was coughing. Oh, sorry. Um, the result was very interesting. Out of 6,000 dials, we got back 4,500. So we have, out of 6,000 6, subscribers, we have 4,500 idiots. We actually picked up their phone and saw, ah, oh, if I have a missed call from 1900, I'll call it back. So from the carrier's perspective, that's legitimate traffic. You made a call. Village. Really? I have to charge you. Sorry, you made the call. Can't do anything about it. Carrier can't do anything about this attack. Customer can't do anything about this attack. Even the MOC doesn't know what to do with this attack. So in Israel, what they did, they actually went off to the manufacturers of the phones and the ATAs to change the firmware to not accept external invites from unknown systems that you're not registered to. Now, we all know that, that flag, accept direct IP dialing on your phone. Anybody disable that? Hands up. Wow, we've got what, like 100 people in here? Three people! Wake up! You've got a big problem. You're all exposed. How many of you are hosted PBX providers? Hands up. Okay, so how many of you are vulnerable to this? Hands up again. Same people, <laughs> because you are. Yes, you're yeah. So that's. So you talked previously about can I, if I put uh, IP tables on my system, will that help? No, it won't. <laughs> IP tables is just a tool. It is not a solution. It's part of a design. It's part of a paradigm. If you're under the impression that you'll put a firewall in, you put IP tables, I put fail to ban, I'll be protected. <coughs> Wrong. The only thing you're doing is having this imaginary thought that you're protected. 
You, you are, you're going to bed thinking that a fail to ban will please save my ass. See, please, do me a favor. Let me wake up in the morning and find out that I don't have an exploited bill. Yeah, more or less. Let me keep my job with fail to ban. Ridiculous to think like that. <laughs> I, re I remember, um, any, anybody here did cyber, cyber security? In about, about 1990, 1998, I did some freelance work for Checkpoint. Anybody know who Checkpoint are? Anybody use that kind of tool? No. We all used firewalls, yeah. Checkpoint, it's one of the best firewalls on the market. And everybody in Israel back then, 1998, 1999, were installing firewalls like crazy. Everybody thought, I'll put a firewall, I'm protected. And people were still getting hacked. Why? You open up a port. It's open, it's there, I'll use it. Don't expect to put a firewall and be completely protected because it's, it's just the wrong answer. You're looking, at, you're looking for the answer in the wrong places.